This is the time! This is the hour! This is the moment! Are you ready to commit? Are you ready to take what's yours? There are no obstacles greater than you. Obstacles are designed to test you, to break you, to push you beyond your limits. Do not hesitate. Do not lay back and just accept defeat. Defeat is not an option. Giving up is not an option. Which team is going to step up and claim their victory? Which team is going to prove that they are the best of the best? Are you ready to stand? Are you ready to push? Are you ready to take what's yours? Hoo-yah! 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 Welcome back to Atlanta and the Battle Frog League Championship. The first ever team sprint obstacle course racing world championship featuring teams from 13 North American cities and three international squads competing head to head in a four person co-ed relay over 20 obstacles. We started with 16 teams and now we're down to 12. Eight remain in the undefeated champions bracket while four are still alive in the one loss challengers bracket. This is a double elimination tournament where two losses send you home. We're back to action on the champion side of the bracket now with San Diego taking on Dallas. Okay, Amelia, for this one now, Team Dallas, Team San Diego, both winners now, you know, both feeling really good about themselves. And what's the strategy going into the race? Well, so the, both of these teams are very evenly matched. So the key I'm going to look for here are the anchor legs. Benny Gifford, Victor Quezada, very accomplished. Yeah. If it gets down to two of them, it's going to be a fight to the finish. It should be very good. Let's go down to the starting line. Mark, get set. Let's go, 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 go. 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 He's got a big lead if she hits the ball. This one actually got to start doing longer distance events, so ultra distance is multiple hours. So she's showing some great speed here. She was drawn to the sport by watching it on video. She said, hey, I can do that. And she's doing it. Over, under, and through. He's about to go through and make the pass to Sergio Perez, 28-year-old energy management specialist out of Pico Rivera, California, just outside of Los Angeles. And he hits the lily pad where the lily pads are. He can't so fast, you couldn't see it. Paul Sample, though, he's making up some time. He's right on his tail. Isn't that a great name? I mean, I hate to go up against a guy like that. Sergio. Through the Jacks clean tag. This is Shannon Woodard. 5'9, 137. She's over the inverted wall and now the balance carry. And she has been fighting a sprained ankle for the last week or so. It's all taped up. It's massive. So it just shows you the heart of these competitors. And look at her going. It's not even affecting her. Crystal Palmer trying to eat up some distance to Dallas. Come on. Let's go, Shannon. No dirty name. No dirty name there. But there's Crystal Pollard. Pollard's made up some distance. Yep. He's got a chance. A nice transition, nice road climb, though. But there goes Victor Quezada. Quezada. One of several of this CR and trail running events. He's got a clean road ahead. The hump over, no problem. There's Mike Donovan. It's like he's got a healthy lead, but you can see Benny in the background coming down off the big lap. Over Tsunami and through for the victory and the scream. San Diego, two wins in their pocket now. They're rolling strong. That was a fast, fast time, just flawless. And I didn't think that they could improve much from yesterday, but they found a way. Let's go down to Rachel. She's standing by with the winner, Team San Diego. Another crazy fast time. You guys had a win in your first race. This is your second win of the tournament. How are you feeling? Amazing. We're, oh my gosh, I'm just elated, happy to be here, and we crushed it. Heard a little screams from your team. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you change your strategy at all for this race? or coming? I actually changed shoes. So it worked a little better on the grip on the wall, and it was just keeping it fluid, keeping it smooth. 
You were so fast. Did you come in with any other strategy? Um, well, I hurt myself yesterday and my team has just been so supportive through everything and just believed in me and we listened to some motivational videos and it just it just really helped. I have a great team. So Moving forward, how do you guys think that you can stay on top and continue th with these wins? Um, we set the fastest time so far this weekend and that's going to be the benchmark to see how they're going to be efficient and be consistently on that time. So we're going to come out here and dominate everyone. Our next matchup features youth versus experience when Denver meets Chicago. Should be exciting. Let's head down to the starting line. It's set. Go, 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 go. Try to delay. Try to delay. First up, Blue. Blue lighter on that side. 5'4", 135 going up against Harches. Very smooth off that ladder. See you flip over that. Get up that wall. There you go. Get up there. And up the hui line, slide down, and through the water and out. We talked about this, getting out of that water is not an easy task. Yeah, you know, your senses are kind of shocked, your feet are wet, and it's heavy, like, you know, you're carrying water with you, so you're getting heavier. Yeah. There's a tag, Ian Hosting. Nickname the Flying Squirrel, and the squirrel is flying over the four beams and through the lily pad. And the squirrel is off the top. Very nicely done. No problem. Get it through the jacks. We'll make the tag to Renee Dominic. Watch it for the parkour experts. This could be the challenge. A little different. Some strength involved here. Yeah, you know. But oh, man. So nice. Simpson says technique beats strength, speed beats technique. And I've got the heart to beat it all as he heads over the hump over. Denver just has style. They are flying through this course. I think they're still vibing off of that Super Bowl win. That's what I think. That's infected the whole city. There's just no miss anywhere. Hump over Tsunami, the cliff, the water. This could be a new course record. Denver just raising the bar continuously. Exactly, and they were working on every foot plant and placement on the walls and over the walls, and you see it made a difference. When I spoke with them, they said they were gonna shave off time. I was like, where? And <laughs> looks like a good 10 seconds. <laughs> Let's go down to the winners. Rachel standing by with Team Denver. You guys made a course record in your first race and broke it today by 11 seconds. <laughs> Out of control. <laughs> I heard that you were having a little bit of a new technique with some of your obstacles. Tell me about it. Um, I mean, there's pretty much always room for improvement. You can never do something perfect. So we just kind of all walked through as a team, thought what we could each do better, helped each other out, and just tried to tweak it a little bit. But I'm so proud of you guys. Yeah. Good job. Did you use any parkour in any of your obstacles? I use parkour in my life. That's like, <laughs> that's my job. It's like my lifestyle. It's everything. It just helps you be aware of your body, helps you get over things mentally and physically. So I think it helps maybe oh, yeah. a little today. <laughs> and I talked to you earlier. You guys are very detail oriented. Talk a little bit about that in today's race. It's all about efficiency. We know what we can improve. We went and practiced it, and today we executed. Uh, there's still room for improvement, though. We know what we can fix. We had a little fall over here, but she's up and ready to go again. So uh, just going to keep moving forward, keep getting faster. I didn't even notice the fall because I was watching you fling yourself over the dirty name that, that move there. Um, that's just, you got to drive your knees, you got to get your hips high on that obstacle. And then I basically hip catch, swing my legs back, use that momentum to get my knees over. It's helping you guys a lot here. <laughs> what do you think is going to be the key to continue making your times faster and come out on top this week? Uh, just like you said, Ian, it's uh, it's details. You know, a half second per obstacle, a quarter second per obstacle, 20 obstacles that adds up, you know. And just big shout out to these guys because they're, they're making <laughs> it happen. 
All right, congrats to Team Denver, 206 and some change there. I'm going to make an early observation here. I think the parkour technique is the way to go on this course. And if you don't have the speed to beat it, you're going to have a fight on your hands. It looks that way. And, you know, with the improvements they're making, I'm guessing we may see sub two minutes on this course. <laughs> they went to 206 from 217. And how about poor Chicago? They ran a 224. Right. That's a pretty darn good time. Exactly. And they come up losers in this one. Right. But they have another chance. They're still in it. Yeah, so. it's going to be exciting. Up next, more Champions Bracket action as the veteran OCR champs from Norway take on a young and talented Charlotte team. Our next race features a team of OCR champions from Norway against the young upstarts from Charlotte. Let's go to the starting line. Mark, get set. Twenty obstacles on this course, divided by five obstacles per leg. We'll start with the 14-foot ladder, and Albert is on first. There you go, there you go. Let's go. Fast. That's fast. 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 There you go. Good job. Good job. It's yeah. so important for these women to get a quick jump and to really get through the transitions quickly. Here, you know, out of the water, out of the sand, out of the fog. Alvin, out of the water. That's the Uya climb and fly. There we go. And through the show, get the pass on to David Nordstrom to start. Leg number two, and there's Nordstrom. Let's go, under. Let's go, get to Clean McMurdo Station. You never see any problem there from the guy. That's all right. This has to be, I mean, consistently the fastest leg on the course. We are seeing these guys just fly through this. Rope wall, up over. He'll look to give the pass to Karen Carlson just after the Jacks. He's got a clean track if he hits the balance here. Norway is running a really clean race right now. Very fast. They're all taking tips. Dirty name, no problem. Let it get the dirty name very quickly. And she'll set it up for a fast kick for John Alvin. The world champion OCR athlete. John is used to long with horses. You know, so he's more comfortable when, you, when he has a several miles, if not hours. He's won a lot of points at this. He's kind of pushes him out of his comfort zone. Runs as many as 90 miles per week. And you're a long mileage distance runner. I don't know how you do that mentally. <laughs> some people love running, some people hate it. Uh, so it's a. Uh, I love it. Boy, he hit, looked like he hit the back of his head there coming down the slide. He's got plenty of time and can just cruise on in. So again, it looked like Norway just got out to a quick start. Henrietta just uh, really did her thing on that 14-foot ladder, and, and that was it. She did. She set them up, and, you know, they got that lead and just kept getting quicker throughout that course. Now for the winners, let's go down to Team Norway and Rachel. Your second win of the competition. What was your strategy going into this race? Mainly just do the same as yesterday and try and keep calm and stay focused. Did you feel any more nerves today? No, a little bit less nerves actually. Uh, but uh, we were just trying to do as fast as we can, but we have more to give. I love your rope climb. It's awesome, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you learn that kick up from anybody else or does that come from you? No, it's me. Yeah, <laughs> seems to work for you. <laughs> so I've heard that a lot of your races are longer than what you're doing here, <laughs> miles upon miles. So what's tougher about a shorter race? I think it's just the fact that every single mistake counts like 100%. You haven't got any running section afterwards to really catch up any time. And I seem to make quite a few mistakes. So 
I guess in a longer race, I get, I get away with it. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. You know what used to be the fastest time is now just the time you have to have to win the race. <laughs> exactly. 217.37, that, I mean, that's solid, but hey, that, that may not be good enough to win the whole thing. Right, you gotta do more to impress us now. Washington, D.C. and Montreal headline another matchup in the champion's bracket. Let's head down to the starting line. It's set. This is a great first leg for these two women. Rosemary Cote doesn't have as much experience, but you can see how quick she is over that ladder. Extremely underrated there. Go, 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 go. Through the crawl. Cote out first. There we go. Oh, yeah, climb, climb, part. And then the slide part. women are running a close race so far. We could see this continue throughout all four legs. Under, now through, and the tag should look again. Boucher, and they missed the tag, and that cost them a little bit. David McGeed on the other side for DC. He picked up a few feet. He gets out fast. He is a fast competitor. David has been around the scene for a long time. Took a bit of a break to found uh, Elevate Fitness there in D.C., but you know, he's never one to be counted out. The next pass will be Adriana Altrick, who is subbing in for the injured Claude Gatou and Rebecca Adamchuk. They are just neck and neck at this point, but here it's about maintaining this composure over. And you see Adrian carrying that to her side, which is an interesting technique. Gatou was injured in practice, not able to go. A lot riding on the shoulders of Albert in Montreal. It's a big loss of Claude. She's a great competitor, former world champion. Kevin McGee, he's climbing up the Delta lap. He's got the lead. There's a jump. He's got some space. The hump over. See Mark Andre Badarna trying desperately to eat up the distance and running out of time. And he threw the cut and ring. These guys are just flawless on this last leg. It's so hard to make up any time there. And you see Bedard get caught up on the platinum rig as Riggy will motor it home for the big win for DC. And a great time, 2-16-63. Hey, Collapsing on the bench. So, mistakes being yes. the culprit once again, the mistag. Yeah, so, you know, Montreal was leading, had a bit of a jump, and then there was a missed tag. And just that two or three seconds there, Megida at that point on DC was able to get a jump and um, build up a bit of a lead. Rachel standing by with the winners, Team Washington, DC. Did you feel any extra pressure at going into this race? <laughs> yeah, I think we all felt a little pressure. I mean, it being day two, but also, you know, this was a really good team we went against. So I'm just glad we were able to get it out there, so. You guys were neck and neck the entire time. And what, what happened to your head? Sorry, I noticed that. Uh, you know, uh, Ben and I were having a close race, and um, I lifted my head a little too high to peek around, and the next thing I knew, I uh, snagged straight on the wire. It stopped me in my tracks. So I don't know what it looks like yet. We'll check it out and <laughs> clean it up and get ready for round three. You look at these two teams now, a solid performance by DC, 216-63. Is that good enough to compete with San Diego, with Denver? We're all seeing those times right around that 215 mark. So I think DC is one to watch out for. They'll be right in that mix. And what a gutsy performance by Montreal. You know, people talk about leaving it all out on the field. And wow, look at that. They literally did that. They may have one loss against them, but they're gonna be a real threat in the challengers bracket going forward. And that leaves just four undefeated teams remaining in the champions bracket. San Diego, Denver, Norway, and Washington, D.C. They'll face off later on. Next, we switch back to the challengers bracket for four exciting elimination races. Up first, Dallas taking on New York.
Dallas are separated by just two and a half seconds. And they're up next here in our challengers bracket at the Battle Frog League Championship. And let's go to the start line. On your mark. Get set. Here we go. Here we go. Stagger. Can Cyphers make up the stagger on the ladder? Looks like she did. Very smooth over that line. Oh, but now the Cobra with the big jump. And she's got those long strides. Here we go, here we go. Play the frog. There you go, there you go. I'm not sure that wall. Hit that wall. You can hear our Navy SEALs shouting encouragement for the shot there by Nava Cobra. Pretty even coming down that slide. About a second apart. Switched a little bit, so yeah. Reagan made up that time. See how long she is, she got over that wall. This is a last obstacle. Neck and neck, and man. There's the pass, Apollo Sample, Andrew Hogue. Drew McMurdo, clean, the step over. Sample, what a great name for OCR. Apollo Sample, amateur boxer, won the Golden Gloves back in 2012. He wants to fight out now. He is actually putting on some time here. Oh, 43 years old. He's trying to just keep pace. Look how fast Sample was. The Jacks, this is Crystal Ball. But Emily Rosario is hanging right in there with her. I had a chance to talk to Crystal Ball before the race. She was worried about the rope section. She's got a handle of dirty name first. She's got a good climb. Oh, missed the bout. Yeah. She got it on that second try. There was the pass, the final leg. That's Benny Gifford, boy. I don't know. It could be a done deal. Benny's got the swagger. So we'll see if he can lock this up. Such a tall guy between that much Donovan. Move it up, Benny. There you go. Clean to the lane so far. Bill Wells. Nowhere in sight. Barring a mistake, Dallas will take this one on to the next round. And they will with a time of 2.14. And Bill Wells for New York. Look at him. He's got a little swag. Oh, yeah. Dallas celebrating as New York goes through. Dallas will advance. New York will go home. And that was a quick time by Dallas. Well, that was just about everything we expected. You know, yeah. Apollo Sample in that second stage, he was insane. He got it going and got the flying. Yeah, they got that tag almost simultaneously, and he really opened up really opened up and really just with smooth transitions. You saw that over the rope wall, just no hesitation. And just those seconds really built that lead for him. Rachel is standing by with Team Dallas. Here with Dallas. I love the energy. Single elimination round now. And you, you look a little muddier than the last two races. A little bit. <laughs> so rolling around in the dirt. And she, she gave me a good battle. We fought well in the first leg. So it was good. Just like you said, it was neck and neck the entire time. Where was your focus at? Attack, 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 <laughs> attack. And that's about it. <laughs> 214 crazy numbers here. What's the key for you guys to keep on this winning route? Well, honestly, we undercalculated how much time we could shave off by changing technique on some of our obstacles. We cut three more seconds than we even thought we could with screw-ups. So we just got to keep shaving and keep perfecting our technique. Boy, a lot of confidence with that crew between Sample and Gifford, huh? Brimming with confidence. And, you know, you build on that, and you keep up with that, and that will carry them through. Chicago and Sweden coming up next. Marksted O'Dwyer were working very hard on the course. She's very detail oriented in the practices. Very detail oriented. She loves these obstacles. She loves to play on them. And she spent a lot of time perfecting this technique right there. You see it. She's over and she goes with the leap, as does Marches. O'Dwyer showing a little bit more speed, though. Yeah, you know, at this point, they have to take these risks. Get up there. Good job. Good first. Good first. Good Boy, and uh, Arches caught up. Stay at home mom from Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. Neck and neck coming out of the water. The under part, now the two, and the tag. Leroy Rugland and Adam Eggerblum. This is the battle of the 42 year olds. Look at these guys move. I hope to be moving like that at 42. 
looked like Ingleblum went down a little bit there. You did, you know. You get that weight with that other competitor over the lily pads. That's Ruglin. Ruglin through his last obstacle. And there's the tag. Lisa Nando. There's a flip that was clean. Yeah, that looks good. 41-year-old gymnastics coach from Racine, Wisconsin. Showing a little gymnast moves right there. Should be familiar with the balance beam. Look at that stride. Oh, yeah. He's going to push it through for the last obstacle after this one. will be the rope. Nothing doing for Dirty Name. That was easy. Right. Conservative there. Did you see oh, Mikhail is catching Kale up? Potter. Now, Jay Flores has to go in an all out sprint. Because here comes Dice Sven Geffen. Jay Flores, who is going to be the next president of the United States in 2032, as he says. So they're not the next. The smallest male competitor in the competition. He's got the pressure on to move his team to the next phase. Can Chicago stay in it? And he's got to be flawless here because here comes Geis. One more obstacle. Oh, just made it over Tsunami. Dry himself off and race for the yellow tape. And Chicago will dispatch Sweden in advance to the next round. It's all Chicago. They have the faster time going in, and that held up here. So Sweden will go home. A great effort, boy. They were very technical, very fun to talk to on the course, and, <laughs> and just very, you know, very entertaining, and they really had a lot of fun oh, doing this. Oh, they love thing. to be here, yeah. <laughs> Let's go down to Rachel. She's standing by with Team Chicago. Yes, I'm here with Chicago. That was a tough race. Can you feel the pressure building? Oh, my gosh. Every round gets a little bit faster, a little bit faster, and a little harder, and... Oh, just glad our team stuck it out and we're the winners in the end. And we talked earlier and talked about do you guys have some age on your team, but age is nothing but a number. Do you think that's making you stronger? I think age is making us a little bit wiser. I think that when we do make hiccups, I think that with age comes wisdom and so we're able to recover pretty fast. Congratulations to Chicago. They move on with a nice time of 223.48. You know, we talked about the age, Julie Hartjes there and Ruglin. You know, it's like late 30s, early 40s, on down the line. But on the other side is Annalie Markstead O'Dwyer, 39 years old, then the pass to Eggerblum, 42 years old. They did a great job of staying in there. Yeah, and they're still posting times that are as fast as all the young bucks out there. Up next, it's win or go home when Atlanta takes on Charlotte in an elimination race you don't want to miss. Taking on Charlotte. That's coming up next in this loser go home elimination round. Let's go to the start line. Natasha Guyton on the right. 22 year old versus the 42 year old. Drive with the leg, drive with the 42 year old, with the help of the stagger, gets up and over first. Neither really jumping. Yeah, they're taking their time there, which is interesting. And there goes Danielle Smith going into the cross. It's that one. Elimination it's that one. round. The loser goes home. Here we go. Here we go. And here, you know, they really have to lay it all out. Guyton with an athletic background. Track and triathlon. Danielle Smith tripped coming out of the water there. That gave Guyton a little bit of breathing room. And you can see Guyton, 5'10. He's a little bit longer, can get over some things a little bit easier. Yeah, but then you have to get under them. <laughs> Good point. The pass, Mike Bradshaw for Atlanta, John Kramer for Charlotte. They are neck and neck right now. Bradshaw, a former high school football player, played linebacker in college, comes from a military family, works for the U.S. Army. Trying his best to keep pace, but Kramer is moving. 
This team just becomes more and more impressive as we go through these races, and she is strong and fast. Let's go down to Team Atlanta. Rachel, standing by. Here with the home team, Atlanta. ATL, baby. Go. <laughs> Your second win in a row, a little muddier this time. You want a hug? Oh. Hug. <laughs> now I'm muddy. <laughs> did you feel stronger? I did. I did. I felt a lot stronger. Um, You know, we talked about it. And we're all athletes, you just get better. So we're good, we did it. Gaining that momentum. Oh yeah. Uh, I saw you got a little injury this oh, race. That's okay. It's just a little bit, I just wipe it off like that <laughs> and go away. What happened there? I hit the normally jacks on the side, but I just kept going. I felt it, but I was, I'm not gonna stop. Just fight through it. Not gonna stop. I was very impressed by your leg. I feel like this leg is the first leg that I found what works for me. So I just hope from here, I can just get faster doing that. The home team, are you guys going to have some fans out here for the rest of the tournament? Yeah, we're definitely going to bring some fans. I'm a coordinator at a homeless shelter, Covenant House. We're going to get down with my guys out here, a lot of my boys and girls, so we'll have some people represent. All right, and Team Atlanta keeping hope alive. They've still got a shot. Started off rough, but you know what? We're seeing this as a kind of a common theme. Teams get it together, and they start to improve at around this point. That is very true. So as we go forward, it's just going to get tougher and tougher. Absolutely. you got to be on your game from this point forward. Challengers bracket action is next when Montreal looks to change their lineup in an elimination race against Team Houston. So Adrian Alford will start things off. She'll be on the inside lane. And Jen Klintzman will be to her left. The stagger is uh, Alford. Pretty slip there. And now Rosemary had a very smooth transition over this ladder. So it's not a smooth up, but the jump down. He fell again. No one really jumped from the top like we've seen in the past heats. Yeah, you know, you get up there and it's awfully high. Through the ball, pretty smooth. Let's get in control. Let's get has a nice lead right now. We are in single elimination mode. That means the loser will go home, the winner advances. And Clinton looking strong here as she comes up on her last obstacle. You can hear the Navy SEALs shouting up her. Clinton got stuck there on that under part a little bit, but makes the tag clean. That's Cody Muster. Adrian made up a bit of time in that last leg. Boucher is chasing him. And Ben Boucher is putting on some speed. He just about caught him. He did catch him at the wall. Look at that. Quick one. And he jumps over and gains a little ground. So Ben Boucher picking up the stagger. His last act. He's running with a mission to make the tag to Rosemary Cote. Cote started out the last race in the first spot, but has switched to number three. Let's see if it works out. The first time she's seen a J camp, they're both carried off to the side like that, which, you know, you're so unbalanced. You're carrying 40 pounds of water, but it's working. Cote's got some speed and a long strider going against Brenna Calvert. Calvert has a big mistake. The dirty name, and that will open the door for Rosemary to get up that rope. But Rosemary, if she can get up the rope, did she kick it? No, she missed it. 
got it with her hand. And they'll pass it on to Mark Andre Bedard. Got the flip, the bearded one, and the leap. Meanwhile, Mike Morgan Under. will get the anchor leg for Houston. He's got a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, Marco has been a very good anchor for this team. Very solid. Padar looks to stay smooth here with Mike Morgan bearing down on him. Remember, the loser is out of the competition. He's just got Tsunami. And Badar flips over Tsunami on his way to the finish line. Montreal always finishing in style. Montreal finishes with a time of 235.93. So it looks like the changes paid off. They put Albert in the uh, front position and Cote in the third position, and they got the W. Yeah, you know, sometimes you would think that that change at this stage, you know, in the competition would throw people off, but it seems smooth. They knew what they were doing. So for Montreal, they will advance and still keep their eyes on the prize. Rachel standing by with the winners. So how did you feel running the first leg? Um, it was a little bit interesting, like I hit my head on the under, so that kind of hurt, but it was okay. I think I can get better at it. And how did you feel running the third? It's probably a little out of your comfort zone as well. It was a move to just try another leg, and I was sm smiling all the way I was doing the third leg. So. That was the objective and we did it, so I was pretty good with that. I love it, I talked to your teammate a little earlier and he said fun is the name of the game and it's working out for you guys. Yeah, and winning is fun, so why not? <laughs> <laughs> Marco, a man of very few words, but uh, the W always counts. All right, Houston eliminated, Montreal moves on. How good is Montreal? You know, I think Montreal could be a real contender in this. You know, they suffered by losing Claude Godbu early on. Adrian Alvard has filled in very nicely. Our champions bracket features four teams with a perfect 2-0 record. First up, it's Norway and Washington, D.C. We'll bring that to you next. Than a second separates Norway and Washington, D.C., as they're up next on our Battle Frog League Championship. Right now, let's go down to the start line. On your mark, get set. Very quick up that ladder with Corinna. Corinna up and off very fast. Through the crawl. Corinna Kaufman's got a big lead. She is a very decorated OCR athlete at the age of 23, which is pretty incredible. Strong performer in season one in our championship. Over the under the through, very clean, and there's the tag for Nikita. Nikita, no problem. From McMurdo Station and over the beam. Dave Nordstrom catching up. Some time there. Nordstrom caught him in a little slip. A little slip. Oh. Boy, didn't quite get the right technique on that one to the bad spill. Dave McGinnis had a part of the energy on Jack White. I'm sure he wanted to avoid that. Carlson and Rebecca Adamchek. They're head to head. Here comes the balance carry. Oh, and off goes Adamchek. That opens up the door for Norway. And Kara Carlson has been very, very solid on this leg. Well, just went over that dirty name easy. One step and a kick. And the final leg, John Alvin. John has talked about having you know, had a few missteps, but uh, looking solid so far. His wife, Henrietta, started the first stage, did well, now he's got to bring it home. Go, 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 go
plays like this don't make many mistakes. Are you surprised that he goes one at a time? I think he just wants to do what he's comfortable with, not make a mistake. Up and over, Shinami. A decorated world champion. Go see him, athlete. He's not going to mess it up. And Norway with the win. So Team Norway with a 213-83 up against the 215-94 for DC, but much closer than it looked. Right, and it really came down to the fall off the balance beam by Rebecca Adamchek. Cost them a few seconds there, but DC was able to make up some of that time. They're not out of it, still strong contenders. Rachel standing by with Team Norway. Undefeated. It looks like you're a little more scraped up than yeah, you've been. It was pretty, pretty harsh. It was a good race though, but... I think that put us in our place. <laughs> you definitely made up for some great time in that third leg. Your competitor had a little bit of a slip up. Did you see that or were you more focused on just keeping straight? I was so happy that I was uh, chased because all the times I've been just doing it on my own. So I was just pumped up for doing my thing and crushing it <laughs> really, yeah. She gave you that extra push in your step. Uh, sort of, yeah, I heard the splash. So I was kind of happy. <laughs> And we heard a little bit of a thud in that last leg for you. What happened? Yeah, I think I um, I got the first few obstacles pretty good, but the second two, the rings and the uh, ramp weren't my best work. So, a little bump on the head, but nothing I can't handle. Thanks, Rachel. What impresses you most about Team Norway? Team Norway is just solid all around. And really, you see a big key there in the third leg with Karen Carlson doing that jump and the kick of the bell. And it's just very smooth, very smooth, and gives them a few extra seconds every single time. They don't make many mistakes, do they? No, you know, and if they do, they recover well. They keep their wits about them. So they've been around this a few times. This next race should be something special. Denver, the fastest team in the competition thus far, will square off against the second fastest squad, San Diego. Earlier, we sat down with Team Denver. I'm a professional parkour athlete. I have a gymnastics background. I did it competitively for like 16 years. So I showed up my first day at a parkour gym in a sparkly leotard and a scrunchie. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and then I fell in love with it and now it's my job. The simplest way to describe it is basically A to B as quickly and efficiently as possible. It's not necessarily the same obstacles we would do in parkour, and there's obviously some variety that we don't always necessarily deal with, like sand and different kind of materials and uh, slides and water, but <laughs> if this was set up here and I wasn't competing, I'd be playing on it anyway. So like, that's what I'm here to do. Born and raised in the mountains, so just out in the backyard, playing around, jumping off things, climbing trees, climbing rocks, and that just translates into a sport uh, with obstacle course racing. With this style of event, every mistake counts. We came off our race and we're like, I could have made this better, or I could really clean this up here. And there's always room for improvement. We can all clean up things, become smoother, compete with ourselves as well as our competitors. They're here to push us and we're here to push ourselves as well. So I'm a professional parkour athlete. When I was in seventh grade, I was just kind of flowing around trying to find sports and my brothers found parkour. And I was like, all right, I'll do it. It seems kind of rad. I think the speed of it and all the movements that you do, you don't usually do in everyday life. Uh, it definitely reminds me of being a kid. I climbed trees all of the time. Every tree in a park, I would be like, I'm going to climb that. That's mine now. <laughs> the chemistry immediately clicked. All four of us just operate the same way. It's really a lot of fun. We're just playing off each other, and they're helping us out. We're helping them out, and it works great as a team. Even though we may have a bit of a gap on the other teams right now, they're going to get faster, and so we need to get faster, be more smooth, be more fluid, um, be quicker in our transitions, and uh, I think we can get it done. Absolutely. Let's go down to the starting line. Get set. Quick work of those lily pads there, up to the rope wall. 
up the rope wall pretty clean. Boy, and that's a big jump off for Hosek. Get down, get down, And here get down. comes Sergio Perez. Perez has been fast, but he's got so much ground to make back. There's a pass from Nate Donovan along with Shannon Witter. So smooth over that inverted wall. Oh, that's a bad call. That is a bad call, so she's going to have to get back up. Renee Dombley fell, hit the beam, then hit the water, and that's Shannon Wooder, who's been bothered by a bad ankle throughout the event. You know, she came into this injured, but she's fighting through it. I saw her this morning getting her ankle taped up, and she's got some tape on that knee as well, all on that left side, but she takes the lead and gives that lead to Victor Quezada. And you saw Renee Donnelly back there fall into the dirty name, which actually took them up even further. So San Diego has a very comfortable lead at this point. Quezada going through Wedge Donovan now the platinum ring. He just has to be smooth. Tsunami, last obstacle in the round. And out for him. They are fired up. Renee Domley took several bad spills yeah. in her leg. She came down really hard, falling off the balance between the jerry can, and then went down again on the dirty name. The balance carry hadn't claimed anyone throughout our competition, and I believe that was really the first hard fall into the water. And this is not something to just go out and try in your backyard after you've had a couple vitamins. And Renee is up and walking, and that's good news. Rachel standing by with the winners. Hard fought race, blood, I think all over all of you guys. <laughs> Did you feel the pressure coming into this race going up against the fastest team so far? Yeah, I mean, there's always a pressure, but you just gotta stay calm, collective. We've done this before. We're just here to have fun and just do what we love. Your arm, what's going on here? As soon as I went into Normandy Jacks, I think I hit the wood pretty hard. You know, I kept going, kept pushing. I wanted to attack my teammate. I didn't want to stop. I heard that you have a good theory as to why you guys took home this race. Denver's kind of had a lead the entire time. They've never really had pressure on them. So I think our mental toughness got us through it. You guys definitely put that pressure on them. You're recovering from some injuries as well. How are you feeling? Is your knee okay? Uh, my knee's okay, just a little bit of uh, IT band issues, sprained ankle and strained rotator cuff, but you know, <laughs> you're fighting. <laughs> Didn't slow you down too much. You guys took out the fastest team. What do you guys need to do to continue knocking off and take home that championship? Uh, just be consistently fast. Just because one person fell doesn't mean you have to rush the course because she fell. Then you make a mental thought and then you kind of slip up. So you had to stay calm and collective. So hopefully we take the prize. I like the words from uh, Shannon Woodard. What she said about Team Denver has never had to come from behind. Correct. And that, that speaks volumes in this type of event. I think so. You know, and it really, when you are up against somebody neck and neck, it's a whole new ball game. That pressure is there and it's on and it's real. So being able to keep that composure like San Diego has done definitely gives them an advantage. You too can compete in a Battle Frog race. Visit BattleFrogTV.com to sign up for one of Battle Frog's 44 races across North America. So San Diego moves on to face Norway for a spot in the finals. Meanwhile, Denver drops to two and one, and they'll have to fight their way back through the challengers bracket in the next edition of the Battle Frog League Championship.